Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Shigosha TV. This is Sai here with another episode of Ame no Marginal, Rain Marginal. We're going to be going over with the written episode right here, and let's see what's going on. I was... No. We were raised in a house of priestesses. A branch of a noble house that sends unmarried daughters to the shrine. Of course, noble didn't mean the royal shrines like the Kami or Ice or Ize. Or how do you spell it? Or say it? It was a local shrine under a small unknown priest. Before I can remember, my older sister and I were adopted and are raised as priestesses in training. So I didn't know any details. I didn't know my birthday, nor who my real parents were. It was also a mystery when, and for what purpose, we were sent to the shrine to be sh to be raised as priestesses. But we didn't think about those questions. We were never worried and never felt any dissatisfaction about it. It was a world where unless you struggled to live, you died. That kind of world, we didn't starve, nor freeze, and were able to safely live our lives without a vent. Plus, in my case, I had a kind of sister. In the season of long rains, it was a clear night sky. A, a very clear night. In the break between those damp clouds, the big face of the moon peeked out. Without thinking, the words tumbled from my lips. At those words, my sister shook her head and basically moved both her hands. And once again nodding, she moved her hands while moving her mouth. Nodding, she happily patted me on the head. Yes, it will be fun, won't it? That's what I think, she said. Even if her, vo even if her voice didn't make a sound, I could read her lips. I could understand from her expression. Even if no one else could understand, as her sister, I alone could. The older sister, a sister older than me by 10 years. The only relative that I had. Someone very dear to me. Always gentle and cheerful. Even the small part of her that was absent-minded was charming. At all times, she had on a peaceful look, a peaceful smile that never broke. However, she wouldn't speak. Not that she couldn't, she wouldn't. Of course, in the beginning, I had thought that my sister was unable to speak. Like how the blind had eyes that couldn't see. I thought that she was unable to form a voice. However, just recently I had been taught that that was incorrect.
That was what I was told. My sister was, as the princess, bearing in that task. Apparently, the shrine had made some prayer that created a death that had been over a hundred years earlier. Obviously, the one that created the death with was a god. I imagine. I didn't know the details, but I was taught that in order to repay the debt, a kind of atonement was required. I had thought that priestesses were just standing for gods, but I learned that they could also be burdened with the role of being sacrifices. And I could understand the reasoning, but was it satisfied? No matter how you looked at it, 330 years was too long. Obviously, it wasn't something a single person's life could cover. Even if my sister spent her entire life, it wouldn't be enough years. Even a child like myself could see that. And that wasn't the end of the requirements. The kanji from meals were said to be once every day. As the queen's medium, uttering earthly words were forbidden. In the name of purification, cold water ablutions were performed every day, all year, without rest, even in the during, even in the during the winter snows. Just what kind of death this was exactly? I didn't know, and also didn't care. It was a death that we never recalled making. Thinking about it now, it was a pretty idiotic thing. However, it was all pretty perfectly natural for that time. Just questioning them itself was punish. And I was taught that my sister existed solely for that reason. One month later, the moon floated in the sky. From between a break in the rainy season's clouds, his large face peered through. That night, my sister was gazing at the moon with a somewhat happy expression. It looked almost as if she had accepted her own fate. That just was so sad. The words just came from my mouth without thought. The words were half a joke, but also half real. Even at my words, she just cast her eyes down a tiny bit, and soon, with her usual cheerful face, she shook her head. Walking ahead of me, my sister happily returned to the room, and then simply laying down on the floor, she quickly fell asleep. It was almost amazing how quickly she fell asleep. But in contrast to that charming, sleeping figure, my eyes were pulled to the white silk cloth wrapped around her mouth. To make sure that she wouldn't speak while sleeping, she would, of her own will and completely naturally, do that to herself. Watching that was just impossibly painful. That act, I can understand it now. I'm sure that my sister must have felt some kind of duty or responsibility as a priestess. As someone who was about to go on, there were probably those who believed in her. But in equal amounts, there, were, there was also concern for me. Originally, we had come to be adopted by the shrine without any support. If the two of us were to flee, 
It was obvious that we would have gotten lost. With a child like myself in tow, it would have been all the more difficult. <laughs> Burning sunlight in the class of Hikaras, the scene you could see everywhere in summer. Noisy Kikadas were erasing all sounds. Perhaps, maybe now. When that occurred to me, I spoke to my sister. In the middle of the chorus of Kikadas, my sister looked at me without moving. I moved my mouth closer to my sister's face. Just once, I wanted to hear my sister's voice. Since before I could remember, I had always been with her, but I never knew what kind of voice she had. I was sure that it would be a cheerful, cute voice. It's like her demeanor, gentle and soft. Nothing like my low, unrefined way of speaking. Even with my continued pushing, my sister remained silent. Finally, with her eyes downcast, she shook her head and moved her mouth. With a small nod, she pointed to the red chlorine arches on the ground. Then her hand waved no no in front of her face. Essentially, she was saying God was watching. From the beginning to the end, my sister was always like that. Every day, thinking that she'd be hungry eating no more than a tiny bit of porridge, I would secretly offer her food, but she never once accepted. She wasn't just strict with herself. She'd often correct my way of speaking. As I was carelessly about to speak a taboo, she quickly hit my hand. Even though my sister only rarely got angry, she would strictly, co strictly correct me about impure or taboo things. Like my young self, we didn't really understand anything. My sister probably was a very fervent believer of Shinto. For example, even if she were to sacrifice for atonement, I believe my sister was undoubtedly also a priestess in service to God. At every time, every place, whatever you did, God was always watching from nearby. That was probably what my sister thought, or perhaps what she wanted to believe. The following year, late autumn, when the red, red stained leaves of the trees began to fall, when a cold wind was beginning to blow, around when I was going to turn 10, unlike myself, who had grown up without any real major illnesses, whenever it came to be this time of year, my sister would lie down on the floor more often. Of course, saying that she lay on the floor didn't mean it happened suddenly one day. At first, she was only down once a month, but then it became three days, then five, and before I knew it, she spent almost half a month lying down. 
And in the middle of that, while making the strained face, my sister would get up early from bed. Her destination was the well in the rear grounds. It was for the daily task of purification, the cold water ablution. When I would run over to her saying that, she would tell me not to worry about gesturing with her body and hands. While wearing her usual gentle smile, she still never once spoke. The late autumn morning air already felt cold to the skin, and steam was rising from her body, just bathed in cold water. Her breath was also really at light, her body numb from the cold and shivering slightly. And she had already been sick without all of this. But if you thought about it, it wasn't a surprise. Without being given proper meals, and living this way for many years, anyone's body would break. Even if it weren't my sister, they would, clear they would clearly be succumbing to sickness. And with that figure before me, I again wound up asking the question I've asked countless times. There wasn't any particular response. Of course, I was expecting that she would use her voice to reply. But she neither nodded her head up and down, nor shook it from the side to say no. She just, while looking downward, shivered in the cold. I'm sure that my sister herself really knew. But if she continued living like this, her uh... Somewhere in the future. Indeed, from the start, it had been forced to be much longer than a single human life. Even if my sister were to keep that contrast until she died, she would never fulfill it. A child like me could understand that, and yet it was impossible for my more intelligent sister to grasp. But at my words, she shook her head slightly and poured, pointed at the Tori. Just like she had previously done, she was indicating that God was watching. That was how I really felt. As someone who was in service to God, I might be a failure, but I have never seen him or heard his voice, nor heard his voice. To me, his existence only served to torment my sister. A dry sound reverberated right as I spoke. Of course, that sound was my cheek being slapped, and none other than my sister did a slapping. There was no pain. More than anything, there was a there was surprise. My usually very kind and calm sister was, for the first time ever, 
showing me a very strict face. She wasn't angry that I had suggested we run away. It was because I had questioned the existence of the gods. I'm sure that my sister believed in them, in the bottom of her heart, as a priest in the service to God, as well as one who took on the duties of such. If one were to deny that, then it would be denying one's own reason for existing. That's why I think my sister believed. No. Wanted to believe. Next month. Where's the music? Around when the leaves on the trees fell, and in exchange, light fell from the sky. As always, the days my sister spent lying down continued. Before, she'd been lying down for half the month. But, as if in sync with the coming winter, she now seemed to be lying down all the time. Immediately after finishing the morning cold water ablution, she would almost collapse to the floor and just sleep. One day, a young footman I was friends with secretly told me my sister probably couldn't be saved. He also added that she probably would never even make it to spring. We were 10 years apart, so she would have only just turned 20. But it seemed that my sister was going to die. I was very sad when I heard this, but I wasn't very surprised. I'm sure that somewhere in my heart, I had calmly accepted that the time had come. And I knew that if she continued to live like this, sooner or later it would happen. Even though since as far as even though since as far back as I can remember, I was brought up to be a priestess just like her. For some reason I have never been once taught anything about things like rituals. Since I was only ten, maybe it was something I would be taught in the future. But right now, other than being my sister's younger sister, I was of no value. Then one day, I was called to the main shrine. Not with my sister, alone. Lowering my head exaggeratedly deep, I bowed to the person sitting in the center. He was the head priest, the highest ranking person at the shrine, and someone I almost never met. Up until now, I had only met him while hiding behind my sister's back, so I was extremely nervous. Did it just... I had raised my head, but kept my eyes lowered while answering. The it that the head priest spoke of was my sister. And by the way, he would only refer to me as girl. That's rude. In terms of standing, we were considered priestesses, so we had never been treated rudely. But even so, we weren't treated properly as humans.
I remember that word catching me. The words indicated more than one. Not your sister, but your sister also. Before I could think about what that meant, the head priest continued to speak. At first, I couldn't understand what the head priest was saying. Take over? The duty? Me? But then I soon realized he was saying that I, too, will have my words seal away, live on one bowl of words a day, chill my body. As a 330, as a 333 year sacrifice for atonement. He answered without hesitation. There wasn't one head of change in his voice or expression. It was as if he were blandly explaining something extremely obvious. And indirectly, he told my dad I was a spare replacement for my sister. With that, the head priest's expression softened just the tiniest bit. It was the first time I'd seen that sort of expression on his face since I'd come here. At the least, if it were impossible, even using my entire life, then it was all the same to me. I silently gave a small nod. Honestly, I didn't know what to say. Even if I said I didn't want to, I understood enough to know it wasn't going to be allowed. And yet, looking at me silently nodding. When I once again silently nodded at those words, the head priest wore a satisfied smile. When I left the main shrine, I was thinking many things. I just couldn't bring all my thoughts together. Even I didn't think that 330 years, 333 years can't be covered by a single plus person. If they weren't a supernatural being or a holy man, it was natural that a person could only live about a hundred years. But I hadn't thought of writing it down with a number of priestesses like this. To go that far, just what could have been the step to God. To be honest, I couldn't imagine it, nor was I interested. 
All I understood was, if my sister dies, then I will be the one who will take up being the sacrifice atonement for her remaining 200 years. Obviously, if I spent my entire life, it wouldn't be enough. By chance, by chance, I looked up. The sky was gray as lead. It was such a striking sight. That winter's icy sky seemed to be filled with gray as far as you could see. That night, my sister was lying down with a soak loaf wrapped around her mouth. As always, she continued with this. Her way to keep from accidentally making a sound while coughing. Facing her like that, I told her about today's events. That her sickness probably couldn't be cured. Cured. That I was her spare, but I would, I would be taking it up after her. She mostly listened to my words without any particular reply. She especially didn't show any surprise or dismay. These were all the things my much smarter sister had probably guessed. My sister probably couldn't be saved, and it had been decided that I would follow after her. The exhausted figure of my sister would be mine a few years later. At my weekly not nodding sister, I continued to speak. I didn't say in a light-hearted, partly joking, joking way that I used to up until now. I said them um, because I really wanted to flee from here. Even if my sister cannot be saved, even if this had all been done out of consideration for me. The life that I attained from all that, at this point, its future had become worthless. Even at these words, my sister remained silent, silently looking down. Eventually, she slowly shook her head and closed her eyes. No matter what I said to her after, she didn't face me. With a silk cloth wrapped around her mouth, even on her deathbed, that duty, the sacrifice for atonement, was what she continued to fulfill. For a death alone we don't even recall making to some god or whatever, she, ne she never opened her mouth or used her voice for me. Even now, I had never heard my sister's voice, and just maybe it, may it might all end before I, ev I ever hear it. A premonition that I didn't want to come to pass, for some reason felt like it wouldn't miss. Next month, the harsh winter came in full force. For the first time in a while, it was night. It was a night where the large moon showed its face. 
the cramped sleeping room that my sister and I have used. We were sleeping there as always, when suddenly they came. With a sharp clack, the sliding door opened for forcefully. John was a priest and a head priest, along with a number of footmen that I recognized. <gasps> it was so sudden. I had no idea what was going on. For it to be so late at night, and have many come, all, come in one after another, it was honestly more scary than surprising. Before I could even ask what that was, a cloak was pressed to my mouth. But then, almost like a gag, it was firmly tightened. The priest muttered that while I was unable to understand what was happening. What then left on my eyes was... <gasps> Before me was my sister with her mouth gagged even more tightly than mine. Moreover, pressed to her neck was the blade of a tanto, ready to tear into my sister's neck. Saying that, the he priest look at the footman holding the tanto. No, it was then that I finally understood the situation. They're going to kill my sister. On top of that, from the instant that I would become the next sacrifice, they wanted to prevent the chance that I could use my voice. If it happened that suddenly, in a place with no one around, she were to die of her illness, there was a possibility that I would raise my voice in crying. They probably feared that. <gasps> I thought the little girl was Ren! Wait, no, what? Just saying that he glanced at the frontman holding my sister and the tattoo tattoo. Even when I tried to use my voice, I couldn't form words. That's why I screamed in my heart. There was nothing else I could do. My body was held firmly so I couldn't even run close to her. It was the only thing I could do. And my sister was looking at me. The blade pressed to her wasted body. Neither able to move nor use her voice, she pleaded with her eyes. <gasps> she said that even if she hadn't voiced it, my eyes told me. Till now, Someone who served as a priestess risked her life, risked her entire life to be the sacrifice for atonement. Believed in God, without question, sacrificing herself. The person whose endless smile never broke. For the first time, she pleaded. For the first time, she beseeched that 
God for salvation. At that time, I had a thought. If right now, she weren't saved here, then there was no God. I know nothing about death or loves, don't care about atonement or sacrifice. Anyone all those days never existed to be begin with. Even if it was something that refused to save her right now, it was not a God. And so, there is no God. That's what I realized. No. Calmly, thankfully, that was all the head priest said. Just as, just as he finished saying those words, a sort of wet spray sound came, rang out. It was like the sound of water, except this was this isn't water, but blood. It was the sound of that spraying out of from her neck. The color wasn't red, but the same black as the darkness. Unable to speak, I screamed in my heart. In front of me, as I held for as I was held firmly and unable to run to her side. My sister became, became soaked in strongly flowing blood. My sister was looking at me, a black stain spreading over her without any apparent resistance, trying to convey something to me. The only part of her that wasn't bound, her eyes, she gazed at me. Then, like the thread holding her up was cut, she collapsed forward. <laughs> and just that easily, she died. I didn't know what my sister was trying to tell me in the end, but it seemed that there wasn't a god. <laughs> and so, I lost my voice. I always stopped from forming words. In the end, I never once heard my sister's voice. The final time, the final time I used my voice was to the head priest when I said, "Accidents." Accidents. <laughs> when thinking that those were the last words of my life, despite myself, I felt it was pathetic. And. As his fourth sacrifice, I took up the remaining 200 plus years of atonement to pay back a debt to something that didn't exist. My life also died right here. Early Spring After those events, a few months passed and the north wind finally started to soften. On that chilly early morning, I was continuing the daily task of mourning cold and water revolutions. Oh man. <laughs> With my water or my water. With my mouth closed. I got off like I was choking. Like my sister, I always had. Unlike my sister, I always had a cloak wrapped around, no, forced around my mouth. The only time I could remove it, move it was to eat, and then there was also a footman next to me watching. Apparently, unlike my si unlike with my sister, I wasn't trusted. That was probably obvious as I had nothing. I needed to protect. He seemed afraid that I might despair at everything and suddenly raise my voice. <laughs> they were only poem. If I suddenly, in the middle of eating, 
raise my voice, you probably could have stopped me. Again and again, I pushed back that impulse. One reason was because without a doubt, I would be killed. He placed the duty of the torment above all else. For that task, they did not even dig up the sacrifices that seemed them. I was sure that I would be subjected to unimaginably cruel reprisals before being killed. <laughs> and one other reason was my sister. If I were to throw it all away, the past hundred years would have been to be started from the beginning. If that happened, then all my sister's actions become nothing. Even if it were for a stupid thing, I would lose sight of just what my sister lived her life for all these years. So this wasn't for the head priest, not the shrine, not myself. Certainly not for some god. It was for my sister that I was throwing away my own life, resolving to live as sacrifice. I hadn't yet to turn 11. It was a young, nor a powerless person's own kind of determination. Summer. The season work is known as Lolly Called and the heat returned. Today I also finished my daily duty and was lying down in my bedroom. Perhaps my determination to live on as a sacrifice was wrongly understood since there wasn't anyone at my side constantly watching over me. <laughs> from what I heard, they, will, they were bringing someone in from somewhere. Of course, a spare. Fine. While I was still healthy right now, that didn't mean I would be forever. They certainly knew that well. Even if, I, even if I weren't my sister, continuing to live this way made it obvious. For my age, I had become thinner. Looking at my own young body, that's where I felt. That night, I currently had my eyes closed and was about to fall into a light sleep. Focusing on my ears, I didn't hear anything but people's voices. Even though it was late at night, there seemed to be sounds of shouting and screams. Sensing that something wasn't right, I got up. The voices were still far away, but without a doubt, they were coming from the finish line. So I put my head on, my, on the sliding door to take a look inside the bedroom. When before I could open it myself, it slammed open. What? The first thing the familiar young footman said upon entering. However, contrary to how he usually appeared, his breathing was ragged and he was very agitated. He was also wearing bright, bright red clothing. Gesturing to my hands and whole body, I asked them. <gasps> Saying that, the footman pointed to the rear gardens. Looking closer, I could see that red on him was his own blood. I saw that there were also various cuts and parts of his clothing and body. With those words, he finally fell face down onto the floor. I do. The faraway screams I heard just before were now very close. I don't know what is going on, but I have to get out of here. While looking at the man who apparently had died before me, that's what I thought.
I ran straight from the rear gardens into the mountains. I turned to I didn't turn around to look. I was so afraid. I didn't dare to turn I didn't dare turn around. Running as fast as I could, the glow bound around my mouth to keep me from speaking added to my difficulties. But I didn't move to remove it. That was because I had no idea what the situation was right now. Eventually, hiding myself along a small path in the forest, I slowly caught my breath. Then, fearfully, I looked back at the place I had run from. Behind me, the area where the shrine stood was glowing bright red in the darkness. There was no reason to believe it was anything other than fire. And what happened to all the other people? Or as like the footman said, everyone was killed? There wasn't much need to think about it. Most likely it was true. When, while running through the rear garden, I remember hearing a number of familiar voices changing into screams. The head priest, lower priest, and all the priestess, the many footmen that came from the court. I had heard that despite being a small shrine, it had a historical significance. Did such places get raised like this all of a sudden? No matter how much I thought, I couldn't find a reason. But there was a much bigger problem. What should I do now? Could it be that with the shrine gone, I've been released from the role of being the sacrifice for my torment? Or was it that so or was it that so long as this world existed, I had a duty to continue it? I just didn't know. However, I understood that if I were found, I would be killed. I started moving the feet that had stopped on that forest path deeper into the forest. I didn't know just how far a child's feet could continue running. But there was nothing I could do. Half a year later, late autumn. Deep on a mountain, around when the wind's red stained leaves on the trees were starting to drop and the weather was slowly changing to winter. Living here in hiding, a few months passed before I noticed. There were days pieced together with wild plants and fish from the stream. As I had thought about going down into the village a number of times. Thought about it, but I would get scared and would be unable to leave the mountain. The other people who had attacked the shrine might just be simple robbers in the night. I think that was the most likely case, but people who were born down the holy shrine might be someone of greater influence. If that were true, I couldn't be careless and get myself found. Normally, the footmen were people from Imperial Court and had no connection to the shrine. But despite that, they were also killed, so I doubt they would let a priestess associated with the shrine go. Even if it were a grown child. But while I thought about that, there was also another reason. Actually, this was this one was even bigger. Failed priestess with no skills, someone who was nothing more than a sacrifice. Did I have did I have a way to live? With these doubts gathered together, I just couldn't find the courage to leave the mountain. And yet, even now I didn't use my voice, and every day I had cold water ablutions, continue my duty of atonement. Yes, not even I knew the reason why. Even though I didn't have a sister I could rely on now, and that head priest that I didn't dislike wasn't here. 
Even if I spent my entire life continuing on, there wouldn't be anyone to come after. With even the shrine now gone, it was all meaningless. Two months later, winter. Snow fell from the sky and stained the black mountains in light. Facing the oncoming of deep winter, I had a premonition that I was going to die soon. I haven't eaten anything in three days already. Moreover, with the snow covering the area, it didn't seem likely that there would be something edible around. The mountainful autumn mountain had changed. In the winter, the mountains became like a land where the living died. Since my sister's death and taking on being a sacrifice and atonement, I had been the same as dead. Right now, there were only two things I regretted. The first was that I wasn't able to save my friends to go on wherever it was. The other was that I wanted to hear, just once, my sister's voice. That was it. Imagining my sister's voice within my heart, it was a very bright and cute voice. With those gentle words in my ears, I quickly closed my eyes. While falling slowly to sleep, I wish that I would, ne I would just never wake up. The next time I wake up, I think I would hate being in this world. And that was the red episode. Oh my god. Oh, well, it looks like we have Rainy World and Lady. Oh gosh, that got me. Well, thank you guys for watching and tuning in to Shugosha TV. This is Asai here, and next time I'll be doing Rainy World. So. I'll see you guys in the next part. See ya.